you know, guys. Okay, guys, this is uh, Spreaker also. Uh, if you're just joining us, which you probably are, I'm on live on all three uh, social media platforms. That's YouTube, For All To Hear TV. I'm also on Blog Talk Radio. Yes, I'm back on Blog Talk Radio and Spreaker Live for the first time in probably almost two years. Okay. Um, let me, matter of fact, let me, Spreaker guys, let me give you my number and the same for YouTube. If you don't already have my live calling number for Blog Talk Radio, if you want to talk to me live, it's 646-668-2654. That's 646-668-2654. I'm on live right now. You can call me directly. All right. I'll be on for about another, uh, 30 minutes or so. Anyway, um, Back to talking what I was talking about here. I, uh, I originally, well, I've been going to church off and on for probably that I can recall the last 40 years, 40 something years. I originally didn't start going, uh, going to church all that much. Well, I started going by early in the early 70s. I would go to my grandmother's church. My grandmother was Methodist. I would go to her church. It was a lot more serene and quiet than the Baptist church. Um, And she was a Methodist all of her life. And she, uh, she died a Methodist in 2004. And that's where they had, matter of fact, that's where they had their, her services, right at her church. The church that I once belonged to. So, I remember I joined my grandmother's church one time. I think it was, might have been in the 80s. Yeah, I think it was in the 80s. I think late 70s or early 80s. I walked over there by myself and went over there and hung out with my grandmother and then went to church with them. And then I went over here and went home. Walked by myself home. By myself. I did it twice, matter of fact. You know. My mom's and was still going to, uh, to the other church. And my mother was like, well, you can't be at the same time. I said, well, mom, they got a basketball court. They do all kinds of stuff. We haven't done over with our church. And then we didn't either. <laughs> we didn't do anything like that. Matter of fact, I talked about it. Me and a friend of mine, <clears throat> Tony, we actually joined the church. Uh, we joined the same church. Well, well, he joined a little after I did. My mom, my sister, my brother, and I all joined the chain of the same church around 1979 when I was 15. It was like I said 14. It was actually, I was actually 15. Or right around 15. I was about, eh, about 14. It was actually was 14. I think I didn't get baptized like later in the year or something like that. But nevertheless, um, I, uh, I joined. I did a little, I did, I did a little everything there. I taught Sunday school. I emceed a number of programs there, day and night services. I also uh, was junior deacon. I sang the choir. I ushered. I did all. I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm talking about. I did everything in the church that I was doing at the time, and I enjoyed it. I really did. I felt I belonged somewhere. You know, I didn't, uh, I didn't play organized sports. I did play sports a little bit, you know, in school, of course, not, you know, maybe once in a while, occasionally play the pickup game, whether it's basketball or football. Didn't do a whole lot of that. My folks actually didn't even want me playing sports. You know, they kind of felt like, well, all the black kids out there be playing sports and stuff, and you, uh, all they want to do, that's all they want to do. They don't want to get no education. All they want to do is play sports. You know, and uh, that's what a lot of kids were doing until years later when they was like, oh, wow, uh, you could have been doing this like everybody else. Like, yeah, but guess what? Who do, And guess who didn't want me to do it? You know, what my did I did it? You know, by, oh, I, I changed, nah, nah, I don't want, you know, you, you could have been out there making that money. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But anyhow, I found some place where I, where I, I felt comfortable doing what I was doing. 
Now, I will say this. The five, six years I went to that church, there was no mess going around, no pastors, no deacons, or nothing was trying to hit on me as a teenager, or as far as I knew my brother and my sister. No, that would have been the problem. You know. So, I wasn't a big fan of being in a choir. I was at first. You know, my dad was telling me one day that year, and he said, man, you need to get out of the choir. He told me, he said, you know, I was, here I am about 16 years old, 15, 16. Y'all didn't want me playing sports. But then I couldn't, you know, I couldn't, you know, get involved with, with anything outside of sports. But I couldn't get involved with sports, you know, organized sports, because y'all encouraged me to go ahead and get my education. I was told that. Okay, of course, you're a young man in school trying to obey your parents the best you can, you know, because that's what they said. They tell you what they feel is right. And you feel you going along with the program. So I, that's what I did. And when they told me that, I said, okay. I'll just stick to my education. Keep that in mind what I'm talking about here. Because that story is going to go somewhere. Now, I uh, went ahead. singing in the choir. And everything I was doing, you know, like I said, I said I was teaching Sunday school. Because I was an assistant. They made me an assistant Sunday school teacher, which is what I did. I didn't teach the younger kids, but I taught, you know, kids probably about 13 and up. You know, you know, the teenagers understood a lot. And I, I would break down the lessons. I would just break, read it and break it down. You know, I would study a lesson the Saturday night. And then by Sunday, I had a narrow down pat. And I was proud of that. I accomplished something. But when the dream killers come in there, it kind of take your joy away. But as a kid, you ain't know that. You know how bad the joy was going was to be, be, be uh, taken away and how devastated you were going to be when you found out that maybe what you were doing wasn't the right thing to do, even though you didn't know if it was right or not at that point. So, of course, uh, my dad literally told me, he said, you need to get out of choir. I said, why? He said, they, 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 they make your sissy out of you. Now, unless you had got violated and was in that kind of shit, which I wasn't, I was hurt by that. I wasn't really hurt by it first. But I did feel some kind of way about it. Because on one hand, and, and, and it's something, I got a side story to tell you about that along with this. Because on one hand, I was hurt. Because it shows me all the years I grew up in, living at home, my dad didn't believe I was capable of doing anything right. He didn't even believe I was capable of even being involved with that at all. Like, I couldn't do shit. And it hurt me. It, it, you know, it, it hurt me deep. You know? You're saying you don't want me playing sports because the fact that uh, you feel it's going to uh, take me away from education, which it wouldn't have. But yet you don't want me to sing in the choir and, and learn about the Lord and teaching kids about the Lord. And then that was a problem. It was like, damn if you do, damn if you don't. I couldn't go to fucking camp. I, well, I couldn't get involved with Boy Scouts, but that was another whole story. I may tell you that. I may tell you that another day, but I couldn't do anything. It's sad, you know. And it hurts me very deep, man. To this day, people say, oh, you need to get over it. No, fuck that bullshit. You know, now don't get me wrong. I love my father. I love my fa- my parents, man. My parents had went through had went through a lot of bullshit during the Jim Crow and post Jim Crow era. They were the last generation who lived under Jim Crow. Jim Crow was a fucked up ass system, man. When when people came out of slavery, you know, and generations of families had lived under that bullshit that the government allowed to happen. Yes, they did. 
And so, of course, my dad was telling me that stuff. I was like, hey, guess you're right. I'll, I'll, I'll get out. And I did. But it all also made me feel like, damn, you know, because my dad had been known to, you know, when I was growing up, he was telling me, you know, was saying I was this and I was that and yeah, so stupid and all. You know, it hurts. When you tell a kid that, especially early on, it kind of fuck with them. It kind of fucks with them. Believe it or not, you really do. Because you hate... Let me be honest about it. My parents never got along. Now, I'm not telling nothing out of tune because even divorce, everybody knows about that. I'm talking about everybody outside of this. Social media knows about that. So that's no no secret. They never got along. I mean, it's not the way you would think people would get along after being married over 20 plus, 25, 30 years. And I always said that my parents, particularly my dad, took his aggression out uh, about his relationship with my mother on me and my siblings. Particularly me. You know. Anytime you hear somebody say. Well if it wasn't for y'all. I wouldn't be there. I'd be doing something else. You just basically saying. If y'all wasn't even born. I would. I'd be on doing my own thing. But thanks to y'all. I'm here doing this with y'all. That sounds like you're putting a burden on somebody. Because you felt it was a burden to you. To even be involved. How the fuck you going to say that about your goddamn kids? And now I got to feel some kind of way about you? Fuck that. I love you. But I'd be damned if I'm going to deal with it. Deal with. I'll deal with you when I'm ready to deal with you. You know? And yes, I'm on fire. That's why this show is called DJ Wolf Live Lit. And that's for people who understand where the fuck I'm coming from. Because I don't give a fuck if you understand or not. But I do. I appreciate if you do understand it. But if you don't, you ain't got to listen. Bottom line. Yeah, I'm feeling some kind of weird about it. And I have for the last 40 plus some odd years, man. You just don't know. You just don't know. And, well, let me get to it. So, when he told me that, everything that I did, the teaching, Sunday school, Becoming a junior deacon. Emceeing the number of the programs in the church. Ushering. All that went out the window for me. I kind of felt like there was nothing left. If you're telling me that I can't even at least sing in the choir, then there's nothing left for me to do. That was part of what I was doing. I was serving God. And now you tell me I'm wrong about that. You know? There's no wonder it's, it's, it's such it's, it's, it, it had been a high rate of suicides at the time. There's no one. I mean, of suicide, of, of teenagers and stuff like that. No wonder. You know. It's no wonder about that, and I'm not surprised by it. At that, you know, that's why you got all these kids out there doing that mess because the parents don't give it. You know, they make it about them and they say about you. Yet they're putting the burden on you about the marriage and how fucked up that shit was. And then now all of a sudden that's your fault too? Really? What kind of bullshit is that? How the fuck you going to raise kids to be better than you and you fucking putting them down at the same time and then they got to fucking damn deal with their fucking burden and they want to put their burden of that bullshit and their relationship with, 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 the, with your mom on you. Fuck out of here. You know? It just make me upset. I gotta say what's on my mind. This lit, man. I ain't no 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 holes barred here. Nothing. I'm tired of it. You know that's why I created this show from the for all to hear a format. You know this is lit because that to me and the fact that my folks are split up at the, around around the same time. It was too much, man. That was a heavy burden, even though us was kids, man. And then I got into a couple of fights after that. 
it was to a point, man, I could have I could have went down a really slippery slope. And I, I, at the time, I I saw myself going, you know, uh, I was losing. It was getting out. Of, I was about to get out of control. You know, I had nowhere to go. I had no outlets. I had a few friends, but beyond that, I had no real outlets. It was as so bad. I couldn't even go visit my own my own my own, my own cousins who lived up the road from me. You know, that's like a, it reminds me of a totalitarian named Donald Trump. That's another whole story. But um, I won't even go into that. You know, I got other stuff that's on my mind right now. If the media do their job, they will actually <laughs> find what the heck is going on with him. But that's, that, that ain't my concern. Right now, it's not. It's really not. But um, I uh, I felt some kind of way. I felt I felt lost. I really did. I felt very lost and very hurt at the same time because I I the one person I thought would be in my corner turned out not to really be in my corner. It was all about what he was going through. One of, one of the things I learned as a father, when you're a father, whatever you went through should go right out the window. Or not, not the window, out into the back burner. You deal with that when, when you deal with that. That's a separate issue from what you're dealing with with your children. No father, as far as I'm concerned, has a right to put the burden of their past on their kids. Especially when it has nothing to do with the kids. That's bullshit. Especially when it has nothing to do directly with the kids at all. That's the kind of guy he is. Still like that. I went back up there in January to go visit. Started doing He had some, you know, medical issues. I mean, he's kind of out the woods for right now about that, and I think he's supposed to get something else done this week. I'm going to call him up and see how he's doing because he don't call nobody no way. But it's not that he can't call. You just don't want to be bothered. I myself, I try to be there for my family. You know, but I, 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 that's another story I'll talk about another day. But nevertheless, um, I kind of feel like, uh, Wow. And I just sent him, just sent him some money uh, a few weeks ago. Then he called me and told me that he had got it. You know, that's another story. But that's how it is. When you have felt like you was a burden to the one person that you should have been never been a burden about. You know, but there was. I'll tell you more about that a little later. Let me get back on this. Because the thing I want to talk about is how the black church and how this thing re-evolved for me. So, after after a while, probably about around the time I graduated high school, I continued to do things there and stuff like that. But I didn't do it at the same rate, the same pace that I was doing before. The earlier years. And I felt some kind of way. You know, by 1985, I just stopped going to church before I joined the military. And I went once or twice when I came, when I, you know, when I was on furlough or leave or whatever. And then after that, I didn't go back much after that. I really didn't. I'm like, you going to go to church? Come down and go. That's not, I will not go. I don't want to go. Dream killers, man. They ruin everything for you when you're a kid, man. Now nah, you can't do that. You shouldn't be doing this. That's fucked up, man. Sad. Black people, I tell you. We don't get our shit together. We in a whole bunch of world. A world of hurt. I'm telling you. It breaks my heart. It really does. 
Okay. Fast forward to uh, around 2001. I don't even know if I want to talk about that. I was I started back going 2001 on the record for a few few for about a couple of months, and actually served in ushers. And it, it went kind of well, but yeah, it was a mess going on with that. I didn't want to talk about that. And then I stopped going for a while. I didn't go back to church of 2012. It was at a marriage ministry. You know. And that went well. I started going to some other functions. So we went on cruises and stuff. And we did a couple other things. And then, um, by the end of 2012, I rejoined the church. I started singing a couple of choirs. I was involved with a couple of other ministries in the church. And in 2000, uh, probably about 2016, I believe. Yeah, probably about 2016. I just, I wasn't, I wasn't, I was still there doing my thing. And we still, you know, doing our rehearsals and all that. But, I just wasn't feeling the same. And the last year was okay. But this year it just came back up again. Where I, I didn't feel, although I was in several ministries in the church, I didn't feel part of it anymore. I didn't feel like I was part of it. I didn't feel like I was really part of something. And then I noticed I tried to do even more stuff. I still didn't feel a part of anything. You know, like I was singing in one of the choirs and I kind of felt like in the, the choir was, you know, mostly women. It was a handful of guys. And I don't sing bass. I'm not a bass. I don't have a lot of bass in my voice. Not because I'm trying not to have bass in my voice. It's because that's just, I don't, I don't, I don't have a bass tone. That's not my voice. It don't make me less of a person, less of a man. It's just, that's just how I talk. Period. Don't mean I wouldn't have to whoop a motherfucker ass if I had to. And I ain't trying to to go that route. But this is the way I talk. I don't have this baby. That's not me. They try to get me to sing in the, in the tone that I don't have, and they all knew that. The other choir I don't have a problem with, and they know that that my voice is not of a baritone. I'm not a baritone singer. Baritone singer, people who can sing baritone. I don't sing baritone. Yeah, that's not me. I ain't trying to hurt my voice to try to try to try to please you. You know, not doing that. But and because initially they told me, well, you guys, you know, tone your voice, so you know. So I tried that. Then next week they said, "Oh, uh, why'd you do that?" I said, "Cause you guys told me to." Oh no, we didn't tell you. I said, "Yes, you did." <laughs> that's another whole story. I don't even want to get into that. But I'm just kind of like, man, when you get to a point where you start do playing that kind of game with me, I just I just kind of feel some kind of way about it. And I think it all comes to probably part of it probably could be from my childhood. I thought about that because you always told what you couldn't, you couldn't do this and you couldn't do that. Things that most kids would be allowed to do. You know? But for some reason I wasn't. And maybe they come back on me, you know, tell me, well, you know, when I'm restricted to it. I'm like, ah, 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 no. That's the case, I'd rather not be bothered. And that's where I'm at right now. You know, black church, I know, is, I've, I've seen people, matter of fact, somebody, uh, another YouTuber just did a, a, a whole thing on it a couple of days ago about the black church. And he, he was dead on about it. He was dead right. You know, my church actually is a really, I call it Club Jesus in some cases, because it depends on the church. And they do tend to cater. And I say it happened. They tend to cater to black women. I don't know why that video came up. You know, they really do. There's no doubt about that. 
I know people won't say, no, that's not true. Yeah, that is 100% true. There are very few uh, uh, men and organizations in the church. At least not the ones I've seen. I mean, I mean, for the ones I've seen, there are very few men's organizations. I heard pastors talk about that one time. They said, they'd be getting this stuff together up there, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, no one's helping, no one's getting the men to do it. Or the men's not doing it. You know, they got the pull to do it. We just, they just don't do it. That's another whole story. I don't even want to go into that. Well, I may go on a little bit. But the thing of it is, 85 to 90 percent of the organizations that have been created and started and are, are being uh, executed are predominantly by the women. They get the most support. Guys don't get that kind of support. That's why you got a lot of guys that don't, don't go to church. I used to be one of them. I know. For a long time, I wouldn't go. It's not that I don't love. It's not like that I love the Lord any less. It's not that I don't believe in. It's not that I believe in, in Christ any less. Because I believe in Him probably as much as anybody else, and I do on a daily basis. You know, just because you study the Word, as often as people say they do, don't mean you write around people. You write with people. I've seen that too. You know. I know church people who cuss like sailors. I see them do it. I hear them do it all the time. Outside the church. And I do hear them do it. I know because I've done it. <laughs> but well, I'm talking about the ones that, 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 that really the holy rollers. The holy, I've seen a few of them do that for real. I ain't perfect. I'm not going to claim that I know everything about the Bible. I'm not going to claim I know everything about what Jesus say uh, and quotes and all of that. I don't. I don't know all the disciples. You know? I don't know half the Bible. I know stories about it, but I don't know half of them. I don't claim to be perfect. I just claim to be me. That's what I can be. God don't expect you to be perfect. God just expects you to be right. He expects you to believe in the word. That's what he does expect. And that's what I try to do. Because at the end of the day, you know, regardless of whether you believe in the word or not the principles the principle the principle teachings in the Bible try to get you to live right I'll say that but as far as fellowship in the church that's a joke you know it is you know that fellowship is 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 is, is really designed for women Guys don't do that. We had uh, went to a um, ball game at, at uh, one of the men's uh, 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 organizations in the church. Did and you know we barely talked to each other when we were there. I I kid you not. You know, barely had any social with anybody up there. I, I'm just saying that's how I saw it. You know. And that goes to show you right there. They ain't catering guys when we come to the church. There was a, a, a thing that happened a few weeks ago. It didn't happen. Nothing happened. But I'm just saying, a few weeks ago, a guy, a guy came up there. That was during Easter. And he asked about, uh, was there a, uh, he was wondering if uh, Christ arising from the dead was the same as uh, as an out of body experience, logically the answer is no. It's not the same. Out of body experience does not mean that you're dead. 
I, out of my experience, it's more of uh, a, maybe a, like a spiritual awakening for you. But you're not being dead in the rise to come back to life. That's different. You know, Jesus arose from the dead. It's about the reawakening of him from the dead because he didn't think he was going to come back. Our body experience was like somebody just stepped out, stepped in. I mean, or stepped out and looked at themselves. They weren't actually dead. So there's a difference. Now, whether the guy knew it was right or wrong about what he said or how he said it, or if he understood what we were talking about, that's one thing. But I think he was seeking out an answer that I don't even think that he even got, as far as I'm concerned. I don't think he ever got the answer he wanted to hear. And that's a shame. It truly is. I was telling somebody the other day, I said, that could have been a new memory that could have got. You know, he wanted to know, he wanted to learn. But then again, in this climate now, man, with all this mess going on, I could probably understand why they probably did it, did not talk to him. I don't know if they ever did it or not. So. That's a shame. You know. All I know is now, And I heard something, uh, matter of fact, I saw on YouTube last night, they said, and I don't know how true it is either. They said the black church annually earns uh, quite a bit of money every year. Yeah. But there are, you know, but then again, you have to understand, you have to look at it like this too. You got to pay for a building. That building ain't going to pay for itself. You know, it's a, I mean, but you know, there's ways they've gotten around, but that's not a story. I don't even want to talk about all that. That's a little complex to be talking about. My thing is this. The number one reason, one, one of the reasons why I don't really want to go anymore because they, they, they talk about this thing called fellowship. I don't, I don't be feeling it. The last few weeks didn't feel like fellowship to me. Not at all. You know, because I even do stuff with the Sunday school. And I was like, I wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling it all. People just look like you, like that. They were just riding on the bus, didn't know where to go. And somebody, somebody else said saying uh, something similar about. Uh, they said they felt like when they were at church, they, said they felt like they were around a bunch of zombies, and that's the way I saw it too. The last few weeks, you know, and you're not. The other thing was. If you have a different, a slightly difference of opinion, they'll shoot that down in a minute. You know, and I've seen that happen too. It's like, wow, you can't even have your own opinion. And I don't know. That's another story. I don't even want to go into that. But what I'm saying is, we. We have to do a better job of trying to understand each other. Specifically as a people. And definitely as a human race. We don't. We don't. That's the sad part about it. Nor do we try. That's all about I got mine, you got yours, that's it. Nothing else to see here, nothing else to talk about here. And I told him all day, I said, look, when you get to a point where church gets like work, I may not be going back to the church. I might just go home, do just the opposite of what the pastor said last week, what the younger pastor said. I mean, he was talking, preaching about, you don't need to be sitting at home watching televangelists and listening to them on the radio or whatever, or listening to the podcast, so I'm just coming to church. But for me, what coming to church is for when there's no real fellowship in the church? I don't feel it. Now, as a man, I don't. Women, they get everything out. They get all the benefits of it. As a matter of fact, that's the other thing I want to talk about. Women tend to get the most benefit out of going to church than anybody. 
Men don't get benefits how going not, not really. I mean, at least I don't. I mean, it would be beneficial. Okay, you build some. Uh, 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 how can I put it? Uh, not context. Well, context. Uh, um, you build a ninety seconds. Oh, come on, you build acquaintances. You know, along that line. You know, if you build acquaintances or something like that. Okay, Blog Talk Radio, I'm, uh, I think I'm going to end this because no one called, but you're welcome to follow me on Spreaker and YouTube. I'll be on for a little while. All right. All right, uh, Spreaker and Blog, and, uh, all right, uh, Blog Talk Radio, I'm about to sign seconds. you off right about now here. Okay. This is for the Blog Talk Radio, people only, guys. All right, guys. Blog Talk Radio people, thanks for listening. That's about all I got for y'all anyway, because nobody's calling, so I'm about to sign out. On Blog Talk Radio only. Spreaker and uh, YouTube folks, stay on for, stay on, just hold tight. This is Blog Talk Radio only, sign off. All right, Blog Talk Radio, I'm out. I will be doing another podcast uh, probably Friday or Saturday. Stay tuned for that. I got a big show coming up on that one, too. All right. Y'all have a great week. Wild Talk Radio family. I'll talk to y'all later. I'm out. seconds. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. All right, guys, I'm back. <laughs> I just had to close up the Blog Talk Radio family, guys. I hope y'all stay with me here. All right, uh, what was I talking about? Oh. Yeah, I was saying that the, uh, it seemed like the, it seemed like it caters more so to women. I mean, they get they reap the benefits of it a lot. They do. They reap quite a bit of the benefits that uh, are there. Their meetings, trips, and all kind of stuff. But the fellowships, the contacts that they build. You know, they build. Guys, we, you know, we kind of just kind of worry about it. And myself, I'm at to a point now, it's like, I don't, the way, the way back in the last few weeks, I'm like, I'm not feeling it no more. I'm not. And like I say, again, it's not like I'm not feeling about God. I'm not feeling about Christ. But it's the church embodiment of the modern church that I'm not feeling anymore. I have nothing personal against it. I really don't. But I just, you know, I, I, I think for myself it's just maybe I'm just not that kind of person that like to pretend like I'm trying to be f friends with you when I do. And I, I really do uh, want to be in fellowship with people there. But I don't want to have to work that extra hard to do it. That's the point I'm trying to make. I should not have to do that. I really shouldn't. You know, and if I feel if I have to do that, go good extra hard, I, I should not even be there at all. You know, that's just me. That's just me, you know. But I want to talk about a couple other things right quick before I sign off. I, 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 I talked about, uh, and I posted the video. If you guys want to see the speaker, if you, uh, speaker fans out here, uh, speaker followers, if you want to see the video, it's about the 14 year old uh, young man. I think it happened just outside of Detroit uh, a couple of days ago. He, uh, I guess he missed his bus and he wanted to find a route to where the school was at. He was going to try to walk there four miles. That's a good little walk. And so he went to an, uh, 
a house in the neighborhood to try to find it. And the woman came out panicking because he was a young 14 year old black kid. And he seemed very well mannered, very well spoken, man. He really did. He, he didn't even act like a hood rat at all. So she hastily panicked and her husband came out there, got a gun and started shooting at him. And then he get arrested. This son of a bitch talking about, oh, I didn't mean anything. I didn't tell you. you don't know, please. I don't need to be doing this. No, no. Fuck that. Throw that motherfucking book at his ass. That's attempted, that's attempted manslaughter. You could kill that boy. He didn't even try to find out what the hell happened. That was bullshit. You know? That's complete bullshit. Now, I will admit, he should have had a phone. I'm sorry. You know, I heard I heard another t- t- YouTuber stupid ass talking about, well, he just had a phone. He, he ain't had the phone. Maybe he ain't couldn't afford the phone. No, well, if you were living out there, maybe you shouldn't should be living out there. No, you should have had a phone. I'm sorry. Now, I'm not totally blaming him for that because maybe he did forget his phone. But if you go around and ask white people in that neighborhood that, yeah, mom should have made sure he had a phone. I'm sorry. Phones don't cost that goddamn much no more. You can get a phone. You get a phone plan for $25 a month. Don't give me that bullshit. Because some of the cellulars sell phones, I just price them today. $20 for a phone, even if it's a flip phone. Don't give me that bullshit, motherfucker. Don't move. You, maybe you can fill the phone. Bullshit. $20 for a phone, that's a steal. Believe that. And $25 a month through consumer sell you, I had it for two years. Trust me, that plan never went up on me. They go more than $30. Don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear that bullshit. I know a lot of kids, even, you know, kids in the, in the hood and projects, all that, they all got phones. Trust me on that shit. I don't even want to hear that bullshit. My man can get a phone. Nigga, shut up. That's why I'll follow your punk ass. I ain't going to say who it is, but you know, what I'm t- I think if it's who I think it is, you know what I'm talking about. I'm always talking stupid shit. That's why I'm following him, man. Talking about, man, you couldn't get a phone. Shut the fuck up. Phones don't cost that damn much. Yeah, he could have got a phone, but I, but I mean, but that's not his fault about what that stupid white guy did either. I don't blame him for that. That's not that's not the young man's fault. That young man was doing what he was what he was trying to do. He was just you know asking you know for, for help. And he got fucked with for nothing. But last least I heard is that 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 old white guy got out fifty thousand dollar bond. He's likely not going to do any time for it. That's bullshit. There was another story about uh, two brothers sitting inside a Starbucks waiting for a friend to come by. I had a, I guess it was a business meeting. And they were asked to, uh, I guess one of them had to use, use the, the, the men's room. But that's the story. But I heard, you know, the story, other story was that they were sitting there and they asked them to purchase something. They were going to sit there and they didn't. And they, the manager called the cops on them. Cops came by, they still didn't buy anything, and then they got arrested. When they were explained that they were waiting on a friend, the friend came to, came around there at the, around, around the time it happened. They still took him to jail. Starbucks policy, from what I was heard, says that uh, they're supposed to, uh, if you're going to be a patron there, and you want to sit there or whatever, that you have to actually make a purchase. To the brothers who got arrested, ma'am, I'm glad you guys are okay. Go ahead and file that lawsuit. It's a damn shame in this country. And this is what I'm talking about. Black men at every turn, whether you good, bad, or whatever, we are the most misunderstood, abused, that's both mentally, physically, in some cases sexually, the most fucked up, messed up, bamboozled, hoodwinked, rolled under the bus males on the fucking planet. The app talking about the African American male. That's a known fact. And every turn we get fucked with. We get fucked with by fathers, in some cases mothers, in some cases other relatives. And women in general over, you know, just just something, you know, no respect at all, man. 
That shit makes me sick. And even in the churches like that. You know. I don't get it. I always say using the brute views to serve like hell. You know? It's a damn shame. Once in a while, I'm I'm not gonna lie, once in a while I ask crowd with that, man. I, I mean I don't literally cry like ball outcry, but I, you know, I, I, I it does make me very sad. I said, no wonder uh some of us have problems, you know, not living as long as women do, because we get stressed up about they stress we get stress put on us all the time. And some of us just carry like a badge on our sleeve and just walk around, you know, you know, like it ain't nothing. And deal with it. That's why I have other outlets like going to the gym and stuff like that. Well, I go out and, you know, may go out to a bar every once in a while. You know, some of us have friends we can talk to. But at the end of the day, man, brothers just got to hang in there, man. You know, as long as you got your health, your feet to walk, your arms and shoulders to move, and your head and all that, you are truly blessed. You may deal with a lot of mess out here every day, but otherwise, as long as you got your health, you are truly blessed. You can still get around, and you can still be free. All right, guys, that's going to be do it for right now. This is uh, DJ Wolf. Uh, see if I'm, I'm gonna do some more checks to see if anybody actually know I'm even on the air. Uh, what? Anyway, uh, I really appreciate y'all guys listening in, man. It's been a blessing. It really has. All right, Spreaker. I'm gonna uh, sign y'all out right about now, Spreaker. Let me turn the music down so they can hear me. All right, Spreaker, I'm signing y'all out. Um, Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you guys later. As a matter of fact, I'll be talking to you guys on the daily uh, the daily rant every weekday. Well, I'm going to try starting tomorrow. I'm going to try to start doing the daily rant in the morning. Uh, early, probably about, uh, about 5-ish. 4.45, 5 o'clock every morning. So, Stay tuned for the live daily rent starting weekdays tomorrow morning. Right here. DG Wolf Live with Spreaker. I'm out. Okay, YouTube.